executive question. You know, what's the what's the access patterns over iPhones and iPads? Now, it's a good thing that Albert Feinstein here is smarter than both of us. Okay, okay. Right? And he said, hey, take a look at this query that I created. Now, if I go to the alerts, I can see that he's added me to his workspace, and he's created this complex query that we can use to actually run and, and do some testing against. So I'm going to run this query. So uh, basically, hey, what we Chad, Chad, I think something's going on. Nothing right? at all. There's nothing to see here, Pat. What? I'm, I'm I think sure it's fine. Chad, I smell smoke. I think something happened. You do not smell smoke. It's all in your smoke. mind. These okay. are not the droids you're looking for. Okay, okay. So is the demo okay? Uh, I, I think so. Let's just keep going and okay. hope it's all right. Okay. So uh, I smell smoke. I think something's it, wrong. It's going to be fine, man. Okay. Just, okay. just roll with me on this. So you can see here that we've churned through that big data. Okay. okay. And we've got the answer to our query, right? Uh -huh. Uh, one thing that would be really cool would be to visualize it. So I'm going to export it out. And again, you can see Chorus makes it so simple, mm -hmm. easy to go through one step through the process. We'll create the chart, and bam, we went from big data, giant ingest, through the analytics, mm -hmm. and into the insight in just a okay. few moments. So here we go. I asked what iPhones or iPads are utilized, and hey, you know, iPhones are you know, clearly the choice over this set. Exactly. It's awesome. Very good. Now, Chad, I think something happened. No. Maybe, okay. maybe. Let's take a quick look. Okay. So this was a Hadoop-based query. Okay. Now we are running it against this Isilon cluster, and indeed it looks like we one lost of the, the nodes. Node. But Hadoop has a problem, right? If you lose any of the name nodes, you're dead, right? Unless you're using Isilon and HDFS uh -huh. with us. Okay. Easy to get into, easy to scale out, okay. and easy to withstand failure because it's got a distributed name node. Okay. So if we take a look, you can see here that we are actually using these big, powerful, next generation Isilon nodes. They're driving insane amount of bandwidth. Okay. And yeah, sure enough, there's one of them here that seems to have failed. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and check, check it out. It out. Okay. okay. All right. Hey, thanks, Chad. Very, awesome. very cool. Thank you very much. I really, really love this demonstration because it showed the power of coming together our scale-out file environment with our Greenplum analytics uh, capability and delivering value that we never even imagined before as these Hadoop big data environments are emerging. So we've covered scale-out block, right? We've covered scale-out file, and the next is scale-out object, the new access method of choice for many of the Web 2.0 and future internet applications. And for that, Atmos, the platform of choice, for the scale-out object access globally distributed environments. And today, right, we're introducing the next generation of the Atmos problem product, being able to deliver right, globally distributed environments at scale right, and being able to continue to enhance that product line as we go forward. And today, right, with the next generation of Atmos, we're able to deliver even more value to our key customers. And one of those customers, China Telecom, building an enormous object-based cloud for the China market. With us is eBay, and we have some Dakar, Munga, I knew I'd screw it up. Munga Mori, here we go, so Dakar, thank you very much, right, from eBay. Sundakar Mungamori, say that 10 times fast. Thank you, Sundakar, for being here. So customers taking great advantage of the Atmos uh, capabilities. And with the Sumatra release, we're increasing its performance by 50%. These environments become so large, we need increased visibility and geographic view right of it, and increasing integration into a broader set of HTML5 and different web access methods and expanded APIs to integrate the offering more fully into different capabilities into the future. So we've covered scale-out block, scale-out file, scale-out object, but ultimately there's just a lot of other applications that need a simple unified platform to deliver. And fundamentally, that's what the VNX product line is aimed to solve. A year ago, we created VNX, coming together of Clarion and Solera into a single product line that allows the scaling of those platforms right into a single solution for the future. The VNX family of products has been incredibly successful since its introduction just over a year ago. And VNX right, offers simplicity, it offers efficiency, right, and powerful platform, but also affordable. Now, as a chip guy, these single processor nodes put together in a dual controller architecture really are pretty powerful. 
And VNX is just riding that performance curve to deliver the single node dual controller peak performance as well as lowest cost alternative across an ever richening family set. Since the introduction of VNX, we've had extraordinary success in the marketplace. 6,000 new customers to EMC, right? Over an exabyte of storage shipped, right? 160 customers over a petabyte. And one example of these is Nisey Euronex. And clearly, this is a mission critical company. We're delighted to have Steve Hirsch in the audience with us today, right? From Nisey. Right, stand up there, Steve. Nisey with 9.5 petabytes running on VNX today, and obviously we need to give you another half petabyte very shortly here. Maybe we'll get a bonus sale for that to get you over 10. But running mission-critical OLTP environments, taking full advantage of fast and flash, also now as a service provider as well, with Nisey Technologies taking advantage of the best-in-class capabilities of VNX in new and powerful ways. Today we're announcing the next generation of VNX software. Right, a, a wide range of new features, and just picking a few of those. One is more efficient pools, right? being able to mix RAID types over different elements of the storage pool. Adding disk to it now has auto balancing for performance capabilities, and best in industry capabilities for writable snapshots per LUN. We've also announced new app sync capabilities. And in terms of delivering more integrated application-aware management, right, this allows the customers to have integration into the data uh, management environment, such as Microsoft Exchange and SQL, so that they have integrated data protection capabilities. One of the challenges in the virtual world is I, I lose visibility into my underlying infrastructure. I'm running these apps up here on top of the virtual si operating system, and how does that relate when I want to be able to look at performance or I have a problem in that infrastructure and being able to look through that virtualization layer and that you know, additional layer of indirection? And how can you make performance and look at uh, uh, root cause analysis in that environment? Today's announcement of storage analytics brings together the award-winning patented technology from VMware, the VC operations product, right, with new storage management capabilities from uh, VNX and Unisphere and bringing those together into a single offering for storage intelligence that you can diagnose, predict, and fundamentally get new powerful insights as a storage administrator. An exciting announcement as part of the EMC world this week. We're also today announcing a next generation of the VNXE product line, the VNXE 3150, the newest member of the VNXE family, taking advantage of the next generation of the uh, Intel architecture family, combining it with new hardware, delivering for that new performance capabilities and higher density per node or density per rack uh, capabilities, the VNXE 3150, the latest member of the VNX family. Joe touched on this a little bit, and I want to come back and look a little bit more deeply at this idea of flash. And we've covered it a number of times in our discussion this morning, you know, how flash has been such a game changer for the storage hierarchy. And if we think about the simple world that we used to have, you know, we had a high performance hard disk, right? And that was sort of your fiber channel, and it sort of did everything. It was a good trade off of capacity as well as a performance. And then, we introduced into that, well, can't we move hot data onto the flash tier? That was really pretty cool. And if we moved hot data to the flash tier, that meant the rest of data was colder. So we can move it to lower cost storage like SAS and SATA. Right? And with that, right, you know, flash is up to a thousand times faster, but it's also a hundred times more expensive. So I have to tier across those environments. And fundamentally, what we're doing inside of that is turning all of our arrays into hybrid arrays, right? Where a little bit of flash goes a long way. Where we're able to get a little bit of hot data, allowing us to make the rest of data cold and overall increase performance and decrease cost at the same time. But if flash is so good, we want to use it in other places as well. So let's go put it all the way on the other end of the wire, right next to the app and the server. So let's put it either as a flash card into the server, right? Or let's put it as an appliance right next to the server with a very low latency interface into that capability. And of course, right, we're underway. But then we're also seeing the introduction of all flash arrays, saying if flash is so disruptive, 
Let's go use it as the center point of our architecture, and we'll use Flash there. Now, when you look at this picture, you'd say, well, what's the difference between the Flash appliance and the all Flash array, right? If, and why would I have both of those? Well, one is on the server side or on the server network, right, with a low latency cluster into the server. The other is on the storage side, right, as a shared storage item uh, device with a range of data services associated with it. So we have the opportunity for both of those. And then, of course, we put EMC's product line against that turning all of our arrays into hybrid arrays, VNX, Isilon, and VMAX. We, of course, have VS Cache, VF Cache, putting the PCIe card directly into the server. Right? We've announced Project Thunder, right? which we're going to the first customer uh, pre-betas in this quarter. We also have just announced the acquisition of Extreme IO, and we'll just call that for today Project X. Right? In Extreme IO, we're continuing the pre-betas that they have underway with their customers. We'll be going to beta with that product uh, in the uh, fourth quarter of this year. And next year, we'll be launching the GA versions of Project X into the industry. And of course, we want to tie all of those products together. And we don't want, in fact, to limit our fast policies to just within our arrays, but across the entire storage hierarchy all the way into the server. Right? And our storage policies and APIs through fast will be exposed. We'll combine those through a single management domain just as you saw us demonstrate, so that we can manage the FAST and the VF cache capabilities across all of those devices, and of course, all tied together with EMC service and support. A full range of flash offerings. And as one of the press uh, quotes said, after the Extreme IO, EMC, the Baskin Robbins, right, of the flash world, right? We have every flavor and we'll deliver it all as a family of capabilities. So we've covered four, and now plus one. Backup and recovery, these large data sets, so how do I store them and keep them right, for long-term retention requirements? Fundamentally, Data Domain and Avamar, the foundational products for the industry for backup and archive uh, purposes. Data Domain has unquestionably become the preferred product in the industry, right, as the world's fastest deduplication storage uh, system in the industry. And with that, right, we're bringing together the Data Domain as a common backend, right, and being able to take advantage with Avamar, right, with Networker, and, right, our DPA capabilities as a unified suite of software offerings that we bring this together now as a single family of backup and archive capabilities, right, onto a single set of backends, software, and then a broadening set, right, of platforms and applications that we optimize the interfaces into, right, the retention environments for those apps. EMC is unquestionably the leader in the purpose-built backup space. 7x the market share of the next nearest competitor. Just a tremendous leadership position that we have. Customers such as T-Mobile, and we're delighted to have the Rez Yarconi here, the CIO of T-Mobile in the audience. So Rez, I think you're here somewhere if you want to stand up. Yeah, thank you very much, Rez. Right. T-Mobile, almost a petabyte per day, right? And just this increasing you know, value of their data being protected on a daily basis and been able to, right, as a result of the performance and the capacity, increase right, the size of their retention policy from three to 30 days. And you know, for the backup environment, it's sort of like water on the pavement of a hot Las Vegas day. There's never enough. It just soaks it up as soon as you put those arrays in place. And for that, we just have to continue to expand the capacity and the bandwidth. And today, we're happy to announce the DD990, a doubling of the performance, as well as a doubling of the capacity right, of the world's greatest backup product. With the DD990, right, we've increased our lead over the performance of the next nearest competitor to, seven, to 6x faster than the next nearest alternative. We've also increased the intelligence of the backup software, faster ba uh, database uh, backups with integration into our man and green plum environments with DD Boost, increasing the retention domain up to 65 petabytes and improved recoverability into those environments. Not just faster, but smarter as well. 
Today, we're also announcing Avamar 6.1, application optimized backup environments, enhancements for cloud ready for VMware environments, and most powerfully, significant improvements for Hyper-V environments. With Avamar 6.1, a 3X improvement in backup performance. And while 3X is impressive in backup, right, recovery is even more impressive as it's 30X faster than the next nearest competitor in this environment. Just the stunning improvements in backup, but more importantly, recovery as well. So we've covered four plus one, four fundamental storage platforms, one backup and archive layer, and the question is, do customers really need all of those to satisfy the full range of their information storage requirements? And one of those customers is LinkedIn. And here in the audience with us, we have Neil Pinto and Chris King. If you guys stand up here, it's somewhere. Now, all of our customers want good price. They also want great quality. They want fabulous support. But the internet customers, like LinkedIn, also demand and put us through even higher bars in terms of value, because they are operating at scale that they say, hey, I'll throw a couple hundred engineers at it, right, and do it myself, and some of this open source stuff, so they force an even higher bar. So I get excited when we engage with tough customers like LinkedIn, right, and they use all of our products. They're using VMAX, they're using Isilon, right, VNX, right, and uh, Data Domain, just across the spectrum. Right, and they hold us to an incredible bar of not just cost, quality, and performance, but also value as well. So thank you very much. We also see that customers want more flexibility for how they get to the cloud. And with that, many of our partners, and we have thousands of them here with us, are delivering the best of breed components. We also have a highly curated offering called a VBlock, our product, the integration of converged infrastructure, network compute, and storage. But is there a way to deliver a solution in between, proven infrastructure? And with that, we're delighted with the VSpecs announcement of just last month. Simple, efficient, and flexible infrastructure. And VSpecs gives the opportunity for EMC, engineering, and labs to prove these solutions. But uniquely packaged with partners, as you see on the screens uh, here with us, and built with the best ingredients on Earth, built with market-leading uh, technologies. And we're delighted to be able to work with leaders such as Intel as our core product, uh, core microprocessor and platform uh, provider. And today, we're also happy to be introducing the first Ivy Bridge-based storage platform, the latest processor generation from Intel into an iOmega storage array, the leading edge of their processor technology. We're also working across the spectrum with Cisco and Brocade as networking partners, server, Cisco, of course, but Dell, HP, and IBM, hypervisors, Microsoft and VMware, and applications from Citrix and VMware. And based on your feedback, we'll continue to broaden the set of VSpec solutions that we offer in the marketplace. So we've covered four plus one. And the next element of our equation is times V, or times virtualization, dramatically increasing the value of four plus one. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Last year when I was on stage, we demonstrated for the first time this idea of being able to run VMs inside of the storage arrays. We said, this is a pretty powerful idea because if you look inside of one of our storage arrays, what do you find inside of it? You find some x86 servers, some fabric, and some storage devices. It's sort of like a mini data center in one of our storage arrays. So why can't we put VMs inside of it? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to allow our storage platforms to run virtual machines. And we'll launch the first ones of those next year, and we'll extend it across all three of those platforms.